Hello everyone, welcome back to Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. This is more Jellyfish Fields time. I think this is called Jellyfish Cliffs, and I said it at the end of the very last video and I already forgot, but whatever. Um, as always, gonna start off this section just going around collecting all the boys, catching all the gals. I guess that's what I'm calling jellyfish now. Um, before we get to the actual task at hand, which is talking to our good friend Pat over there. <coughs> Excuse me, I love calling him Pat. I think it's a good name. I love Patrick in general. Patrick is a, is a good dude. I have to say though, other than Spongebob himself, I, I usually in my adult life find Squidward to be one of the most likable and relatable characters. Which is funny because he's such a big asshole, but I don't know, I... There are elements of his plight that I recognize. Um, also, just before we get too far into the video, I want to apologize for if you can hear my washer dryer, which, as I'm sure most of you know by now, is in the same room that I record in. I live in a tiny apartment. That is why that is. And it's extremely loud, and uh, I know I've talked about this before, but the settings on it make no sense, the buttons on it make no sense. The only choices for, like, wash cycles are, like, 50 minutes and 4 hours, so it just runs forever, and I don't think you're gonna hear it in this video. If it, if it goes ham, then I might, like, pause the recording, but uh, when it's drying, and it really, just every once in a while, it really gets going, and it is deafeningly loud um like no amount of noise cancellation and audacity would mask that so apologies in advance if you can hear it and it bugs you or whatever patrick why aren't you jellyfishing with the rest of us are you okay oh hi spongebob my tummy hurts I think it was that funny square thing that I ate. I sure wish someone could get it out of my belly. Get out of my belly, square thingy. <laughs> Whoa, I feel a lot better, thanks. Hey look, there's another one of those tasty square thingies. I like how you can hear, uh, the, uh, the snails that are down there. That's, like, the only sound effect that you can hear in that part. Because of how quiet it is, but... And they hear that... That little weird noise that they make. That is how they do it in the, in the show, according to the makers of the show. The, the, um, like, Gary moving around noise is them taking their cheeks and just stretching them in and out fast like that patrick takes a million years to walk back um i also love how he is just racing for the tile and then as soon as you get it he just start just zips back on a dime and is walking nonchalantly away. Um, but yeah. Patrick is, uh, kinda useless in this game. I'm glad that he they made him a playable character in the other games, because he's only in a few, uh, like, tasks. Like, only a few parts really revolve around him. And most of the time it's just shit like this where he's just being an idiot, and I don't know. I mean, I guess it's on brand for Patrick. It's just kind of weird. Um, and then he's whisked away from us uh, by, by ne not fucking Neptune, by Flying Dutchman. And yeah, standing in those little swirly vortexes of death that the jellyfish sit on uh is an instant kill i guess 
And yeah, I thought that maybe some amount of jump jamboree would uh, get me up there, but no, you have to go down from the top. And uh, this part is kind of a pain in the ass to get around because both here and up top, uh, because this is a very tall section of the level, uh, you have to ride on jellyfish, and as I've noted, riding on the jellyfish can be kind of a pain in the ass because you never really know. They're just squishy boys, so they like, you know, when they their hitboxes of where you can land on them changes a lot. Um, and also, if you get close to them when they're in their little pads, uh, then they immediately start flying away and uh, then they hit you with their tentacles uh, and then you get your fucking ass kicked. So yeah, I, I don't like it. And I don't like this part in particular because every... you just have to do a lot of like precarious jumping around. Not precarious, it's not the word that I'm looking for, but you know what I mean. Just a lot of going up here and then you gotta come back down and None of the jumps you have to make are, like, that good. Like, it really... This jellyfish doesn't get very close to any of these ledges, so... You kind of just have to, like, go for it and hope that you get over there. But... And am I going to waste time by uh, hopping down here to get these two doubloons and then having to do that whole thing over again to get back up? You bet your ass I am. Because I am the Sponge Boy. Fun fact, if you didn't know, I think this is a pretty well-known piece of Spongebob trivia. But Spongebob was initially named Sponge Boy for quite a long time. Um, but they eventually had to put it, make it Spongebob because apparently... Sponge Boy was the name of a mop product, and the name had been trademarked, and so it was SpongeBob. But Steven Hillenburg was adamant about the word sponge being in the character's name so that people wouldn't think that he was a cheese boy. Which I feel like everybody does a little bit when they first see Spongebob. I mean, his name is Spongebob, so you know he's not. It does its job that way, but... I mean, like... Just... Yeah, I mean, he's square and he's yellow and he got holes. He looks kind of like some cheese. And there are times in the show where he looks like cheese. And even when they call him Cheese Man or something. Um... Uh, <laughs> which is like in, uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt when, uh, because she's been in the Doomsday Bunker for, like, 25 years, and so she doesn't know about anything past, I think it's, like, 1995, and she goes to, uh, I think they go to Orlando, Florida, like, Orlando Resort, or whatever it's called, freaking Universal Studios, and she sees a guy dressed up as Spongebob, and, and she calls him Cheese Businessman. That's, that's pretty fucking funny. Uh, but yeah. That is your cool Spongebob trivia for the day. <laughs> um, but we're coming to the end here. Uh, you know, just gotta walk around these ship ruins... And uh, there's a tile up, up in her, and then we are going to confront the big scary clown from Chum World. He's sitting up on uh, that ledge over there. You can probably see him a little bit off in the distance if you pause. Um, and he's gonna make us fight him. Just you know, little. Fun spoiler there for you. But before we do that, we have some important business to tend to, which is collect all of the doubloons on the little platforms near the jellyfish and get our fucking wangs whacked by the jellyfish that are floating away.
I love those little vortexes. I don't get it. I also, I never made much use of the fact that you can go into first person in this game when I played through it as a kid, but now I find it quite useful. And it's very funny to, like, just stare at things in the game. Like earlier, when I was, uh, talking to that... Talking? What? When I was looking at that little, uh, snail boy, which I don't know how to kill them. I don't know if you can kill them in this game or what. But yeah, and I'm in my fucking undies because... I kept getting slapped by the boys, but it's okay, they give you some pants. And yeah, you just saw our little clown friend there. But you know the drill, I gotta get those, gotta get my coins first. Yeah, there he is, how threatening. You must be one of the clowns from and I <laughs> went at him at a weird angle, so now you just see his little weird cock shooting up. JK, it's an antenna. Sorry, kitties. Give me your bus ticket to Chum World. Give you my bus ticket? Then I would be in real trouble. But I'll tell you what, Squirt. If you can defeat me, then you can have the ticket. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, I give up. Here's your stinking bus ticket. The bus in Bikini Bottom will take you to Chum World. I gotta find a new line of work. And he flies away. Just fucks off. So now all that's left is to win the jellyfishing competition, which we did. We have plenty of jellyfish, so now it's just a matter of going back to old, uh, uh, crusty Skunter, um, to turn in our jellies and get our bellies. That snail was just waiting for me to bite my ass right out the gate. I keep wanting to call them cats because they are cats of the world. Has there been a new Spongebob episode where they have a joke where um, they go to see a Broadway production of cats but it's called snails? That would be funny. Or I, I don't know if it would make sense because like while the snails in that show are the cats of the world, um, I don't really think Bikini Bottom, like, conceives of it that way, because they probably don't know what a cat is. So maybe they'd say, maybe they call it catfish. But then, but then it would just read like it's a Broadway play of the fucking MTV show. I don't know. Maybe this joke wasn't as funny as I thought it would be. Wanted a reef blower 2500. What a great prize! Not that hunk of junk. But this, this is what I want. The reef blower that defines reef blowers. Okay. Go ahead and try it on to make sure. I don't really get this because he said like this is the prize corral or you know this is the prize thing, and the only things in there are the racing snails and the uh reef blower and he was like the, the racing snails aren't prizes and then spongebob's like oh then i want the reef blower and he's like ah oh, no it's a piece of shit and it's like well then were you gonna fucking give me anything you can press the action button to roll something big with it or to activate a fan and some critters are actually afraid of the reef blower like my poor old racing snails how will i ever get them back into my corral <laughs> All of the, uh, spit coming out of Rusty's mouth. Rusty is really fucking ugly, and he- we will be seeing more of him a little bit later on. But yeah, pretty easy last little thing here. I mean, you don't have to do this part last, I, I just- It's easier to just go through the whole level, get all the jellyfish, and then come back here and do your stuff, because this part takes two seconds. Um, the reef blower is cool enough. You don't really need to use it that many times there's really i think there's two other things where you have to use it and i pretty much never have it equipped because or i, I never have it on because it's like pretty useless against most enemies but at least i get to do a cool spinny thing here while we're riding look look how joyful that is Yeah. 
I do like this concept of it's like behind SpongeBob's eyes and it's in his brain because to me, it's like finding all the letter tiles, uh, l like was allows him to like piece together in his brain where the treasure is. Although I I didn't really think about it until recently that it I don't get why the treasures are just above ground <laughs> in places that you've already been in the game. Um, like, they could at least do a thing where, like, there's a hole next to it and it's like Spongebob d dug it up when you get to it and you can still use the diving rod or whatever. Or dowsing rod, whatever the fuck. Metal detector. Who treasure stick. Who knows? Who cares? I always thought it was called a diving rod or a dowsing rod, but what do I know? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's weird. And like, you know, where was it before? Like, does it not appear until you collect all the letter tiles? I guess that makes sense. But like, why in those spots? Like, I'm guessing that means they are buried there, but then there are some places where it wouldn't make any sense for them to have been buried there, and in which case, like, why don't you have to, un like, dig them up? And then that doesn't even get into the fact that, like, Sandy, she had one in her house. Did you know that you had a fucking treasure of the Flying Dutchman in your home? Just sitting on one of the roots of your tree? Like, why was that in there, Sandy? You s uh, supposedly built this whole tree, doom ha tree dome house yourself. I think... I don't think they ever explicitly say that she built the tree dome herself, but I would kind of assume, because she's a scientist and she came down to the bottom of the ocean on her own volition, and I can't really imagine there's a big bikini bottom real estate market for mammals. It would be really funny if they said ew to glasses. Anyway, next time we'll uh, do more of the video game. Uh, but it looks like our friend Pat is getting a visit from the horrible ghosty. Let's see what happens. Part of a pirate crew? Oh, goody, goody, goody! I won't be alone anymore! Uh, okay now. I'm just going to hypnotize you so we can... What are we waiting for? Let's get going already! So, um, uh, just keep your eye on this patty. Listen, am I going to be part of your crew or not? Uh... 